This is a solution for number 15 of chapter 11. The following data are from a repeated measures study examining the effect of a treatment by using a group of six participants before and after they received treatment. We're instructed to calculate the difference scores and the, the average mean difference, compute the sum of square deviations, sample variance, and estimate standard error, and then we're asked to determine if there's a significant treatment effect by using um, alpha at 0.05 for two-tailed test. So we'll begin by stating our research and null hypothesis. This example is not specific in terms of what we're testing. Nonetheless, we can still write our null hypothesis simply to state that the treatment will not have an effect and our notation would be the average mu difference is equal to zero and the alternative hypothesis would simply say that the treatment will have an effect and the average mu difference would not equal zero. Okay, next um, we should identify what our critical T is equal to based on our degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom is equal to N minus one. Our sample size is equal to six. So six minus one is equal to five. So we want to determine what our critical T is equal to based on our T table. So we enter our T table using degrees of freedom equal to five and our two-tailed test is the second tier at 0 0.05 alpha and we find that the critical T we see that the value for our T statistic is equal to 2.571. And now let's go back to our problem and um, continue the steps of completing this T test. So again, our critical T is equal to 2.5 seven one and we're going to draw our graph so this is negative two point five seven one positive two point five seven one and if it, our t statistic falls in the critical region we get to reject the null hypothesis so next um, we've set the parameters for this particular test. We're asked to compute the average mean difference. We're going to need to calculate our d-scores, our different scores between one treatment and the other. And recall that our d-scores are equal to x2 minus x1. So this is our x2, that's the after, and this is our x1, that's before. So we're gonna calculate our difference scores. I'm gonna erase some of this information so that I can work off of this table here on this page. So our first d-score, difference score is eight minus seven, which gives us one. And then nine minus two is seven. Six minus four is two. 7 minus 5 is 2, 6 minus 5 is 1, 8 minus 3 is equal to 5. And so at this point we can now calculate, let me fill in this 5, we can calculate our mean difference. So the mean difference is equal to the sum of d over n. So we're going to take the summation of this 
um, column, these new D scores, which represents the difference between condition two, the after treatment, um, minus condition one, the before treatment score. So we have one plus seven is eight, plus two is 10, two more, 12, and then plus six more, we get 18. So here is equal to 18. So 18 divided by what our sample size was, which is equal to six. And we get um, 18 divided by six is equal to three. And now we are um, told to calculate our SS as well as our sample variance and our estimated standard error. So our SS is equal to the sum of D squared minus the sum of D squared over N. And again, we're just going to replace variables. And so we know the sum of D because we just used that in our average score. So that's 18 in the parentheses. I'm going to square that for N is equal to 6. And so we just need to figure out what the sum of D squared is equal to. So we're going to calculate our D squared. So we're going to square all these values. So 1 squared is 1, 7 squared, 49, 2 squared is 4, 4, 1, 25. And now we're going to take the summation of that column. So we're going to add 1 to 49 to 4, 4, 1, and 25. And in your calculator, when you do that, you should get a summation equal to 84. Okay, so now we have what we need to calculate our SS. So in your calculator, we have 18 squared divided by 6 is equal to 54. So we have 84 minus 54, and we get SS is equal to 30. And given that, we can now calculate our variance. Our variance is equal to SS over N minus 1. So we have 30, which is our sum of squared deviations, over N minus 1. N is equal to 6, so 6 minus 1 is 5. So 30 divided by 5 gives us 6. And now we can calculate our estimated standard error of the mean difference, which we'll need for our t statistic. And our equation, again, we have two, but we're given variance, so we'll use that equation, which says we'll take our variance divided by n and take the square root. So we'll take the square root of 6. Divided by 6. And that's equal to the square root of 1, which is equal to 1. So now we have everything we need to calculate our t statistic. Our t is equal to the mean difference of our sample minus the hypothesized mu difference over estimated standard error of the mean difference. So this um, mean difference was calculated to equal 3. 3 minus 0, the 0 comes from the null that says there's no mean difference and then divided by our estimated standard error of the mean difference, which is equal to 1. So our t statistic is equal to 3 minus 0 divided by 1, and that gives us 3. So now we'll go back to our table over here on the left and determine where this resides in our distribution. And we would understand that this t value of 3 falls in the critical region. It's greater than or falls beyond 2.571. And therefore, we would reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is a difference um, in the treatment effect, that the treatment does produce different scores compared to the before treatment scores. So although we weren't asked to, we can write our concluding statement in this way. So we would reject the null based on our t statistic and conclude that results indicate that 
the treatment had an effect. We conducted a t-test where degrees of freedom was equal to 5. Our t-statistic was equal to 3. Our probability statement would say that the probability of obtaining that t-statistic is less than a 5% chance if the null is true.